I'm going to wait for some folks to show up here. Merry New Year calendar flip Sylvester. My friends. Merry New Year calendar flip Sylvester. I'm not saying Shana Tova. I'm not saying Happy New Year. I'm just saying Merry <laughs> New Year calendar flip Sylvester. Sylvester, if you guys know, is the, is the name that uh, is used in Israel for this holiday. Calendar flip is something my business partner came up with. And Merry New Year is Eddie Murphy's Merry New Year. Um, well, guys, I'm going to wait for a couple more people to show up. There's my friend Phil. was popping. 2022. You know those rappers used to be like 1994, 1989, 1987, <laughs> 2022. Um, you know, if you guys know, if you guys know the history of the history of World War II, when uh, Mr. Hitler, Mr. Schmittler, um, when his generals came to him and they told him, you know, uh, mein Herr Führer, you are losing, you are about to lose, this is the, they didn't tell him those words, but they basically told him, you know, this is the situation, and, uh, you know, things and stuff, and stuff and things. And, uh, oops, one sec, guys, uh, yeah. They told him this is the situ situation, um, after some yelling and screaming and all these kind of things, my friends, he basically said, okay, guys, what is, what do we have to do? We have to kill as many Yudin as possible. We have to double down on our efforts to continue as we were doing and do it more and do it more and do it more. My friends, uh, you would think a person like that would, you know, augment his strategy, this and that and the other. But when they told him, as we say in Russian, Gidler Kaput, you know what I'm saying? Gidler Kaput. Um, he was like, listen, forget about all this military stuff and uh, all this kind of stuff. Let's just go ahead with what we were doing. Kill more civilians. Yudin. That's what he continued to do. My friends. You know, it's interesting. You know, Dr. Mousy came out the other day. And he's already, he sees, he's kind of losing, so he's kind of like, quote-unquote, retreating. He goes, well, you know, a bunch of these kids are ending up in, uh, you know where, and um, it's not because of Shmovid, it's with Shmovid. They have other stuff, and it just so happens they get tested because they have to go to the hospital, and it just happens some of these kids have Shmovid. So now he's, he's actually attributing it, you know, not, they're not hospitalized as a result of Shmovid, he's actually saying the truth, Right? Um, there was actually another thing that he said the other day, I don't remember exactly what, but it was also kind of an admission of, uh, it's almost like normalcy, you know, he's, he's, he's basically saying, you know, uh, I think it was him or somebody else said the Shmomiron thing, uh, is going to be, you know, gonna, there's going to be a lot of cases, but the thing is, is basically going to go very, very, go away very, very quickly. Uh, one second, yeah. Omiron surge, and therefore other reasons are there for many people hospitalized in the Omiron surge, and therefore other reasons only have mild Shmovid. Um, let's see. Uh, one second. Uh, there's another thing that he said. I don't remember what he said. Um, somebody posted it. The kids are. But you know, despite all that, despite him understanding all of that, guys despite the fact that he, he kind of gets it, right? Um, he says, you know, 
this thing is uh, the stuff that we're trying to give you doesn't even really work for the next uh, the new the new shmariant, but you should take it more. You should take another one. You should take a third one. In Israel, you should take a fourth one. My friends, at this point, you know, as th- at this point, these guys are doing the equivalent of a what's called a fire sale. You know, like like a, like a clearance sale. All inventory must go. So they have to push the inventory, my friends. They have to push the inventory. And you know, some of them are actually thinking, you know, that we're going to kill as many as possible. Yes. Some of them are just like, well, we have to sell as much as possible because we got all this stuff on hand, right? We didn't think we were going to run out. We thought we were going to keep going every year, like Shmuel has said, you know, at least once every six months, once a year, whatever it is. You know, uh, what's called a rebuy. You know, we call in my industry a rebuy. We have to keep keep having rebuys. You know what I mean? Number's going to get to 10 at the rate they're going. Yeah, listen, like, they, they would love for it to get 10. It's not going to get to 10. It's not going to get to 10. You know what I'm saying? But they would love it. But now they have to keep doubling down. You know, as, so, but now you see, like, at every, guys, you understand, at every step of the way, this mousy guy, he covers his little tiny bony tuchus. What does he do? He goes, he goes on rent with Rand Paul, and he says, Rand Paul goes to him, no, you did this stuff in uh, Shmuchan. He goes, no, it was not done. He goes, listen to me very carefully. He's like, it was not done in Shmuchan. Yeah, it wasn't done in Shmuchan. He's right. It was done in North Carolina, University of North Carolina. But then one of the Shmuchan people who was there, the, the, the Shmat lady, took it, and she took it to, sh- to, to Shmuhan. She, she took it from North Carolina to Shmuhan. And that's where they was made, weaponized, right? But you see, this guy never, my friends, he's so smart. He never, incre- and if there's going to be a tribunal, he, he's, he's going to say, I never said that. I said like this, and I said like that. And then you see, I went on TV, and I, ba- you know, and I, and I said, yeah, it's not like this. It's like, you know, my friends, he's basically now, oh, oh. I didn't do anything, I didn't say anything, you know, guys, it's like, it's like you're watching a hockey game and the guy holds the guy, you know, the opponent, and then, and then the, uh, you know, the whistle blows, the referee blows the whistle, and the guy goes just, oh, oh, I didn't do anything, oh, holds up his hands like this. My friends, nobody, nobody's buying it, okay? Nobody is buying what this person is selling, my friends. He's not going to be able to say at a tribunal, okay? My friend is saying, stick all the rebuys up, up, shmalchis, and shmurlas, tuchas. Yeah, guys, listen. Guys, you know what's funny? I'm just talking to you like this. All I'm doing is adding SH to the words. So far, you know what I'm saying? I could post this on shmutube, right? But all I have to do is say the full word, the actual word, the actual name, guys, and my YouTube gets <coughs> done. Yeah, guys, so if you look, if you know anything about World War II, you understand that these people have to, if they are killers, and they are killers, they have to kill more. They have to kill more, guys. Guys, just to let you know, by the way, this past week, past two weeks, uh, I've been getting messages and, 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 well, messages, really, and phone calls from people that I know um, who either themselves came down positive uh, with Shmovid, or they they know someone that came down positive with Shmovid, and they asked me, can you please give me the number of Dr. Shmelenko, or, doc, or his brother? Can you put me in touch with his brother? My friends, so far, tu tu tu, bliayin hara, um, I haven't heard any, let's put it this way, I haven't heard anything from them, since they've been in contact, meaning, meaning, um, nothing bad. I haven't heard of anything bad. I haven't heard of any stories of Has Shalom. Okay, guys, I'm just a conduit here. I'll tell you right now, I'm just a conduit. Um, I don't know if you guys know. You guys probably saw that the uh, I think it was Robert Malone, Shmalone went on Shmogan on Friday. Well, he he went on the day before. It was posted on Friday. Um. And my friends, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now, I was sitting on Shabbat afternoon, Shabbos afternoon, and I literally was just kind of like daydreaming, and I, and I was imagining that Dr. Shmelenko would appear on Shmogan. That's what I was imagining. That Dr. Shmelenko would appear on Shmogan, 
And uh, not only he would tell his story of how, you know, he started administering HCQ and how he just, you know, people were calling and how he was treating people. He would also tell the story of how, not only that, but how he was talking to presidents and uh, leaders and uh, people in the shmump, in the, you know, re uh, Orange Man administration. Um, not only that, but how he, basically his, the idea that uh, there are people that are trying to kill us, he would name names of who's trying to kill us, why they're trying to kill us. You know, guys, Bezat uh, Hashem, if Hashem will allow me to, and Shm Dr. Shmelenko will allow me to, I will be interviewing him, Bezat Hashem, this week. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We shall see what happens. And we're going to get to the, more the, the inside story you could say, or the pnimius, as we say in, in uh, I guess, Torah talk, of really what's behind all this. You know, these guys are trying to build a modern-day Tower of Babel. You know, the Shmab guy, the Shmates guy, other guys like him. And the difference is that they don't understand that there is actually a God, you know, as we say in Coming to America, there's a God somewhere. They don't understand that, right? So... And uh, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to build it. And we're going to get deep into that. And, yeah, we may get deep into why Why is it that they, after telling us way back in the beginning that they're only going to do stuff with older people, give stuff to older people, and maybe people f maximum they're going to do like 40 and over, why are they now going for the kids, my friends? Dr. Shmelenko mentioned that, you know, a, a, a pagan society is when uh, they sacrifice children for the purpose of the adults, right, to save the adults, as opposed to a normal society uh, where they sacrifice, uh, you know, adult, adults sacrifice themselves to save their kids, right? My friends, we're going to get deeper actually into that in terms of actually there's some stuff going on that people are not really privy to. They don't really understand what's going on. And it's it's some really crazy, sick stuff. And it's... Um, I won't mention it here, guys, but I'll, we're, we're going we're gonna to get into it. Bizarre to Shem, if I have an opportunity to speak to Dr. Shmelenko. And, uh, yeah, so that's basically the story. And, um, yeah, guys, listen, these guys are only going to double down. They're going to double down. They're going to keep going. They're going to keep going as they absolve themselves verbally, as they spin language, as they, you know, uh, create you know, kind of a smoke screen around themselves to as so as not to incriminate themselves or decriminate themselves because they know what's coming, guys. This kind of, they, all, they always, that's the thing, guys, in the back of their minds, they always know what's coming. They always know what's coming, which is hopefully very soon, you know, a tribunal. I have an argument with, with my friend uh, Ephraim about this. He says, no, I don't need no tribunals. I just want Mashiach to come and all this to end and this and that and the other. But guys, you have to understand, like, if you read, if you read uh, la this last week's parsha, this parsha coming up, this week's parsha, Hashem has to show the evil people that He is Hashem. He has to, He has to show via these, uh, so to speak, uh, demonstrations. I mean, at, at that time it was plagues, but via the demonstrations, you know, some of them are within natural law, some of them are bending natural law, some of them are completely suspending natural law, right? Like, uh, I call it black, you know, the, the, the bending natural law is black swan. Some of them are just within natural law. And some of them are suspending natural law. Guys, but Hashem has to show these people that He is Hashem, that they are not gods, they are not demigods. And that's the way it's got to go, guys. And then after He shows them that, that's when, that's when, uh, you know, then we're going to see, uh, Bezat Hashem, you know, only goodness. Anyway, guys, all right. It's been real. And uh, Bezat Hashem, it's going to be a, a good week, and I'll talk to you soon.